Hello everybody and welcome to Game Dunk. I've probably said this already um, a little bit earlier in person, but I'm going to welcome you back anyway uh, because that's what that's what we do here. All right, so thank you everybody for coming to this talk. I'm here with Jane Routley, who is a writer, is one of our wonderful judges for the Arpias, uh, and has written some modules, or at least one module, uh, for Call of Cthulhu, works with, uh, and that has been playing Call of Cthulhu for quite a long time, and has won two Aurealis Awards for writing. So thank you, Jane, for coming to have a chat with us today. Thank you very much for having me. It's been, it's great. We've, we're, um, I, yeah, it sounds like Game Dunk sounds like a wonderful concept. I'm sorry that you won't be able to be here to, to have a look, but I promise there will be plenty of streams for you to come and uh, have a look at afterwards and see all the things that everybody made. So I'm just going to yes. kick off with a real quick uh, introductory question. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about your work? Um, you've written some novels and you've done a module for Call of Cthulhu. Can you give us some more details about that? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a writer of fantasy novels, really. I And, um, you know, I've got I've got some, a strong uh, woman mage just learning about her own power, really, in the first series. And then Shadow and the Empire of Light is an author, um, is my last one that came out in 2021. Uh, about an orphan without magic in a family of powerful mages, um, uh, just trying to um, keep a head above water, really. Running the whole but gamut, also, then. Yes, yes. Uh, that was that's quite influenced by George at Hayer, but it's a bit more um, a bit bit more sexy than that. So yes, Ooh. Um, yes. But I, I um, it, novel writing is very hard work, um, and and it can be discouraging. You um you spend an hour a year and a half making something and then nobody wants to publish it and you have to publish it yourself and then you've got to do the marketing etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so that can be tough. I've I've had been lucky. I've had small publishers do most of my work. Um, but um, some friends said to me, why don't you um you love playing Call of Cthulhu? Why don't you write some scenarios? So I um I've started on one and tomorrow I won't become the game dunk because I'm play testing the second. Wonderful. We wish you all the best of luck with that. Um, so those scenarios for Call of Cthulhu, can you give us a brief synopsis? The first one is called Proud of the Threshold, and it is, it is my, um, my love, love song to share houses, really. Um, it's a modern day one, and um, these people, students, move into a share house. It can be anywhere you like. I've made it, I made it a bit like a sandbox. Um, but it does. It is. It is opposite a cemetery, and they um, become aware that there's something prowling around the house at night. Dun um, dun dun. Um, <laughs> thank you. It's got a really, really jolly. You can't cover that. You can't see. Although maybe you can. Yes, of, they um, can. A creature looking through the windows of a. So yes, hopefully. And it's been good. I've I've actually never kept before. I've started this, um, but I'm enjoying keeping because it actually um, I enjoy the storytelling aspect of it, and that's one of the things about working with existing modules, is that um, the love the hard work world building is done for you, and you can just concentrate on telling a story. The one I'm playtesting tomorrow is um, through my interest in history. I became aware of the fact that. Um, in Edwardian times, suffragettes used to load themselves into little gypsy caravans and travel around the um, countryside, um, you know, it, encouraging people to support votes for women. And I thought, oh, I'll put some of these in a, in a um, forest where there's a arcane horror, an eldritch horror, and see what happens. So we'll be in, I'll be interested to see how that works. Um, but yes, I've got this vision of tentacles coming out of the windows of a suf of a caravan. So the only thing that yeah. could possibly be worse than the patriarchy. <laughs> yes. Good, Good point. point. Yes. <laughs> so as we were having a chat um, earlier, you were having a talk about uh, how storytelling is really your passion and that you were a little bit worried about um, people getting or not getting into the modules that you create because the rules were handled wrong or things like that. 
Um, so can you have a talk about what sort of specific scenarios you were sort of thinking about? Um, were there any particular scenes that were hard to write because you didn't know how to handle the rules or um, anything like that? Um, I don't know that I've really got a problem with writing modules, especially because the Chaosian people always say to me, tell a good story and don't worry too much about exact losses of sand or, um, um, you know, if, if your attacker is too tough and people are going to get killed too quickly um, or killed for, full stop, um, pull some punches because, it, you know, the important thing is that people have three hours of fun gameplay, not that they get killed in the first hour, if you can possibly avoid it. Sometimes you can't. You have do have to be fair. If someone's doing something really, if your player character is doing something really stupid, then, you know, you've got to let it play out. But, yeah. um, but uh, yes, so I am a bit of a punch puller when I'm a keep, I keep, um, you know, I don't want people to get too insane to be functional in the first hour. Um, so hopefully, I don't think people mind that. I hope they don't mind it. Uh, like I said, it doesn't seem to be a big problem with Call of Cthulhu, but my memory of when I first started role playing and played with one of the more the more rules based games, um, this was RuneQuest, but it could just as easily have been D and D, was that we would play for an hour, and just as we were settling down to camp or something, or we we had hope we hoped to have an an, an encounter, um, the rules lawyers would get into a fight, an argument, and um, that would be really the end of the session for the day. Yeah, it doesn't um, sound like a good environment to be playing a game in, that sort of thing. Yes, and it would really, it would really put me off um, because I would just get really bored. I mean, I didn't really care, you know, if I don't, re I don't remember what we were arguing about. If the, um, yeah, if the octopus, um, octopus could have t uh, a two attacks in a round or not. Um, you know, the idea was to just have the attacks. Um, yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. Um, so you were saying also that this kind of um, this kind of storytelling, the I'm gonna have to edit out this pause. <laughs> um, you were saying that in this kind of storytelling, you are um, you're working within limitations and you're working within um, someone else's world. So is there anything mm. in particular that that uh, really draws you to the types of modules that you create or the types of stories that you create? Ah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how to answer that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, um, I, no, I, I can't tell you that. I mean, I, I enjoy Call of Cthulhu because the, uh, it's not dominated by rules. I, I can manage the rules. I'm, I'm very bad at arithmetic. Um, and uh, I know I've annoyed keepers in the past because we've been in a sandstorm and we've been slowly using, losing hit points throughout the storm and um, I've got confused about how many hit points I've got and not lost enough and, you know, um, you don't tend to get that so much in Call of Cthulhu and that's what draws me to it. And I, for the same reason, would be drawn to a, a module with a simpler game base. But I do like Call of Cthulhu. I actually really like the historical aspect of it, which makes it weird that I did a modern scenario. Um, uh, <clears throat> but I also just wanted to reflect my own life, which is a thing I think you're interested in, isn't it? Because um, I'm also currently playing Vampire the Masquerade with a with a friend, and he's decided that we should all we should set up our coterie in a suburb that several of us live in. I won't um, make the obvious mall goths joke from the uh, <laughs> the synopsis you sent me earlier. <laughs> well, it's interesting. I mean, it's in difficult playing a Toreador in Coburg. Let me tell you, it's not a very beautiful suburb. Um, or really very full of classy, classy art lovers. <laughs> um, although it does have a lot of artists. I, mean, I must remember to bite some of them. <laughs> Yeah, so this kind of storytelling and bringing the 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 world of the game that you're sorry, cat, 
um, <laughs> the world of the game into uh, the setting that you're familiar with or the setting that you like to play. Um, mm. So is that uh, how to frame this question? When you're looking at to bringing the games in, um, obviously there's a culture around specific games, like the sort of players mm. that play Call of Cthulhu, the sort of players that play Vampire the Masquerade. They're not always mm. uh, the same people. Um, they have different interests. They come to the game for different reasons. Do you find that mm. you uh, pay much attention to that when you're designing modules or do you just sort of go with what stories feel best for you? Uh, no, I, I think if I was going to um, do a sort of um, a, a module of, an, of a, just an action adventure, I mean, you can do that with Cthulhu. There's Pulp Cthulhu, but um, I would use a different game scenario. Um, if I wanted to bring in, I wouldn't bring in elves, for instance, into uh, a Cthulhu module because it is, it does have its own set of eldritch horrors. Um, yeah, so it, it would be a matter of choosing the module for first that you like to play. And um, because, it not, I mean, even though I hadn't, I didn't even own any games books, um, not the modern ones. Um, when I wrote my scenario, I used a lot of stuff online. Um, where, did, where was I going with this sentence? It's, um, it's important to have a respect for the world of the game and the world of the game includes certain things. If you want to write um, things with elves or um, um, something with a lot of fighting, um, you could um, move to um, D&D or RuneQuest or one of those. Um, but, but Prowler at the Threshold is, is for um, slightly morbid and horror, although I like people to laugh, um, which they often do. Um, and it's, it's meant to be a bit scary. That's where that's, that's the um, engine of the game. Um, Vampire the Masquerade is proving to be about learning to live in a different way. Um, so although I've, I've, I've noticed with some of, a lot of the on, online um, podcasts, um, they often do horror and detective work as well to provide the game with forward thrust. But for I, us I think at the, the moment... world of darkness kind of do have that identity as a through thread because you've got you've got Vampire the Masquerade, which is sort of about that um, the underground concealed living. There's Prometheus the Created, which is very much about that one's my favourite of the world of darknesses, which is very much about uh, forming your own identity as a process starting from scratch, um, changeling the unearthed. I can't remember. I've got a friend that really likes that one, but that's an out, that's sort of another aspect of that, um, you know, identity and learning who you are in adverse circumstances. So, yes, yeah, and um, well, God knows, setting up in Coburg is a bit of an adverse circumstance. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I go to pause menu, I, I play with Sasa Lestrange quite a bit, and um, I she keeps sorry. That sounds terrible. Anyway, um, I play her, her scenarios quite a bit and she actually takes already written scenarios and tends to set them in Melbourne. Um, and she takes one, she's, she writes stuff already set in Melbourne, but she also tends to take um, Chaosium scenarios and change them from Arkham to Melbourne because she, think, she feels, and I think she's right, people enjoy that more. Yeah, um, absolutely. So that's a that's another form of thing you can do with already um, written work, and again, it doesn't. I don't think the Chaosium people mind that at all, as long as people have a good time playing their game. Well, I think there's um, always a certain separation in these types of things. In between, uh, I guess it's sort of it, in a weird way, it's almost like um, novel and fan fiction in that you've got the module, you've got the game as it was envisioned by the creators, which is not necessarily how it ends up being played or the types of stories that end up being told. Um, and yeah. you've got a bit of control over how your games are played, but not complete control. Um, mm -hmm. well, it's true of many forms of art, actually. I mean, you you know, even with the painting, you haven't got a, you haven't got, actually got much control over how people look at it. And it's, um, I, I, I think it's a strength, not a weakness. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And yeah. I think... and the... Sorry? 
Oh, I was going to say, I think it may even in some ways be most direct in games because the engagement is much more um, uh, direct and generative. You've kind of got to find the the ultra fans for a novel to go see the fanfic or you've got to um, find the real sort of art community lovers in order to, to have a look at how people bring their own interpretations to art rather than passively observing it. Whereas games you sort of can't avoid that kind of um, the iteration and the generative engagement. Yeah. Yeah. People, people are already bringing things, their imagination to your games in a way, aren't they? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I, um, last, uh, last year I was uh, judging, when I was judging the RPS, I read a lot of games and quite often I, well, not often, but a couple of times I got, ideas for for scenarios for those games i would like to write a um um scenario for corsairs which i think is a 10 star game because it's um he set up a world that just you know clicked for me and gave me an idea yeah um, so coming we've got a few minutes left but sort of coming uh back to that more storytelling perspective um you were saying that you enjoy writing modules rather than novels because you get that more direct engagement. You get to see how people are responding um, to your to your game, to your story. Can you tell us about some of your experiences with that? Yes, um, mostly, mostly, um, um, I've had to I've had to roll with it um, because I've, I think I've played, I've run people through it about five times now, and they all do something different, honestly, and a couple of things that I wasn't quite prepared for. Um, so I, um, yeah, no, I've had to, I had to widen what I wrote. Um, you know, I, I kind of set up a graveyard, assuming that people would never get into it, a cemetery, but they did. And, um, then I had to make sure they had a scary time there. Um, so when you, when you write a module, I, I think I probably should have um, run it, done more play tests on it. Um, just for the sake of other keepers, um, but um, oh, sorry, am I making sense? <laughs> no, no, absolutely. I was um, just going to uh, pop in with a, a little bit of encouragement for yeah, no, keep talking about how branching storytelling um, affects how you write. That's perfect. Yes, yes. Well, it, it, um, I mean, in, in some ways, you really need to stop working on something. But I do think I might go and redo an edit of Prowler at the threshold at some stage um, to just to include a few more um, story ideas. Um, at the moment, it's, it's um, yeah, at the moment, you know, there was the um, housewarming party from hell and there was the um, just the people who just nicely followed the um, story arc to the end, which actually wasn't as much fun as I'd hoped. Um, uh, there was um, there were people doing podcasts, and there were um, there were people going into the graveyard and poking about in the graves. <laughs> That's I mean for for some something which is a house with a um, a prowler. That's a lot of story arcs you can have, and that's that's very exciting. And I'm hoping with this new one in the forest too, you can you can you. You need to write a beginning, a middle, and an end. But then, actual fact, what happens in the middle, and actually where you end up, um, is open, should be, and is open to a lot of um, interpretation by the games. It's a very cooperative activity, um, gaming, isn't it? Uh, I think novel writing is for pe control people who really want control. Um, <clears throat> but gaming is a bit like writing, um, working on a play, or a LARP in that you let the you let the um players have quite a bit of input into the story and you should yeah 100 percent. and that was a beautiful yeah. mic drop moment i think so i might close us out with that given we're nearing on the 20 minute mark thank you yes. so much jane um where can people find you if they would like to uh play this module or uh, god forbid read some of the novels is it <laughs> not god forbid not a <laughs> no um well, that's, it's all there. You can get through to the um, things on www.janeroutley.com, and the module, the no, the games are up on um, Drive Through RPG at Biscuitonic Repository. I'll pop um, up some links um, on the screen yeah. and in the chat. 
Thank you again yes, for yes. your wonderful insights. This has been an absolutely wonderful conversation. Thank you very much. And to everybody who's listening, I hope you enjoy the rest of your game dunk.